Because of my fruit of acts, I have fallen into this horrible ocean of nations. Now, please be careful, causelessly merciful to me. Consider me a particle of dust at your lotus feet. Om Gyan Timiranda Syagina Jana Salakaya Chaksu Un Militam Yena Tas Maishu Gurudena Maha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Sri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gorvani Pachari Nene Vishay Sasun Yavari Pastyat Yade Satarine Panchakalpa to Rubis Chakripa Sindhu, eh, which are the Pita and Pavane Vyo, Vaishnava Vyo, Namahoya Maha. Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhunityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadhar, Sri Vansari Gaur, Bhakta Vindam, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. So we had completed the first four verses, which cover the, the first uh, uh, five stages, actually six stages in the process of Bhakti Adao Strata, Sadhu Sangha, Bhajana Kriya, and Artinavritti Nishta and Ruchi. So now we're going from Ruchi to Ashakti, which is an interesting bridge. <coughs> These verses are connected, but one is more successfully, intensely devotional than the previous one. While there are similarities in the expression. As we've been describing, in order to make progress in devotional service, one has to follow in the footsteps this is called Sadhu Vritti. Rupa Goswami explains that Sadhu Vritti is fundamental to our progress in devotional service. It cannot be sidelined. It cannot be dispensed with. It must be followed strictly. Sadhu Vritti means following in the footsteps of the previous devotees because the path of bhakti has already been chalked out. There's nothing new on the path. The only new is your own realizations as you make advancement in Krishna consciousness. The, pro the process is the same and how to attain, how to practice the process is the same and the goal is the same as it always has been. But as we traverse, <clears throat> we also learn about Krishna, about ourselves, about our relationship with Krishna. And through that learning process, we get realizations. And through those realizations, we open it up, open up our devotion to Krishna more and more. Uh, bhakti is really about one thing and one thing only, awakening our eternal love for Krishna. <clears throat> And these different stages are progressions towards that complete awakening. But <clears throat> we might use the word complete awakening as just as a euphemism because one cannot completely awaken love. Love is unlimited. Love is described as being bhakti. And there is bhakti, bhakta, and bhagavan. We are bhakta, Krishna is Bhagavan, and bhakti is the process for awakening our love for Krishna, which is bhakti itself. So love is awakening itself in the form of itself by the process of bhakti. And bhakti is our nature. Our nature is to love. And 
The problem is when we come to the material world, we direct this loving propensity towards persons and objects here and turn away from our natural loving propensity towards the Lord. Because of that, we suffer and experience so much frustration, anxiety, and disappointment. Because we can only love Krishna. If there's any love aside of Krishna, that means it's connected with Krishna. In other words, all living entities are parts and parcel of Krishna. So as the love for Krishna awakens, that simultaneously and in the same correlation wakes, awakens one's natural love for all living entities. And that includes not only humans, but all living entities. <laughs> so this, this verse here, uh, before the Lord is at, in the previous verse, he's, he's asking for devotional service. Now he's indicating his eternal identity. So this, this particular verse uh, awakens or indicates our swarup. In other words, we are jivair swarupoi krishnera nityadas. We have only one identity. Uh, our material identities are ephemeral to our existence. Just like when you go um, on stage, say you take part in a drama and you play a part in that drama and you may also have a costume related to the part you play. But you're different than the part and you're different than the costume. So our material body is, the po is our costume in this world. And this drama is our relationship in this world. It's just, it comes in the form of a satire or it comes in the form of a melodrama, but it's a drama. We're just playing, we just play around here doing all kinds of things that has nothing to do with who we are or how we can actually attain real happiness. Only when we begin the process of bhakti are we actually coming to our real happiness, our real identity? Because that's who we are. We are not anything else but pure spiritual servant of Krishna. So here, you have to understand Lord Chaitanya, he is using himself as a conditioned soul. And he's expressing his mood of ecstasy in that in the position of being the servant of the Lord, although he's the Lord himself. And he refers to, uh, to Krishna as the son of Nanda Maharaj, Ayi Nanda, Tanuja. Tanuja is the son, means son of Nanda Maharaj. Oh, son of Maharaj. He doesn't call him, he calls him Krishna, but he also refers him more directly as the son of Maharaj. So he's referring to Krishna in two ways, as Krishna and as the son of Maharaj, which is a more intimate type of reference. When you call someone's name, you may indicate them through their name, but when you connect them to like, oh, you are the brother of this wonderful person. So you might say you're the brother of George, you know, and that means there's a, there's a greater intimacy in that expression when you refer with, to someone in relationship to someone else that they're related to. Now this is a part of this expression because this, this is indicated of the, how much the love has developed on this level. On uh, this verse, the love has, has now come to the point of uh, spontaneity. It's no longer in following rules and regulations. It's on the platform of Baba Bhakti or spontaneous, not Baba Bhakti, but Raganuga Bhakti, spontaneous devotional service. And uh, one is thinking, one in the expression is, He's saying, I'm falling into this horrible ocean of nations. And the essence means ignorance. 
And ocean means something that's unlimited, unlimited ignorance and makes up the material existence. Material existence is simply meant to uh, trap you into a false sense of activities, a false sense of identity. And in that trap, you only suffer. So it's a horrible ocean of nations. Now, the Lord is begging, in the role of a devotee, he's begging, please be causelessness, causelessly merciful to me. The word causeless is interesting because there's no reason why you have to be merciful. But because you are merciful, I'm asking you to give me that mercy. I don't deserve any mercy, but still I need mercy. Therefore, your mercy is causeless, so give me that causeless mercy. And considered me something. In other words, if I can be if I can be anywhere near your lotus feet, even if it's a particle of dust, I consider that my success. So the lotus feet of the Lord indicates pure devotional service. It indicates complete shelter. It indicates complete satisfaction and happiness. So the lotus feet of the Lord is very, uh, what we say, seen as the aspiration of the serious devotee. We don't, when we take darshan of the Lord, we may, you, just like Prabhupada explains, when you stand in front of the deity, in the temple and the curtains open, you immediately fix your gauge, gaze on the lotus feet of the Lord. You take your eyes and you, you go all the way up to the smiling face of the Lord. Then you bring them down again to the lotus feet of the Lord and then you pay obeisances. That is the procedure for darshan. From the feet all the way up to the smiling face, back down to the feet, and then darshan. And then when you're taking the darshan, or you're stay, Krishna standing in front of you, you offer beautiful prayers, and these prayers are directed to the lotus feet of the Lord. It's not recommended to stare at the smiling face of the Lord, although one may glance at his smiling face. Sometimes devotees get mesmerized by that smiling face, but that is okay. But generally, in the etiquette, we keep our focus on the beautiful lotus feet of the Lord because the Lord's lotus feet are as, just as beautiful as any other part of his body, except one part, and that is his smile. His smile is tanta or paramount to all of his beauty. So this verse, uh, and Prabhupada would say that we should use this verse when we chant Hare Krishna. Uh, we're asking the Lord to pick us up. The chanting of the holy name of the Lord is, is recommended to be done in a helpless mood. Helpless means uh, just like if you fall in an ocean, even if you're a great swimmer, you need to get help to get out. You can't, you can't swim across an ocean, even if you are the, you know, gold medalist in swimming. You still require help to get out of this ocean. So we've fallen into this ocean of material existence, and we need the causeless mercy of the Lord to re to place us on the lotus feet of the Lord, which is outside of that ocean or above that ocean. So in the prayer, in our chanting of the holy name of the Lord, we're focusing on the lotus feet of the Lord and praying to the Lord, please give me shelter there. Our focus is our prayer mostly. So we can intersperse are chanting with this particular prayer. Not that you don't do it through the whole time, but at different times, it's nice to interject this prayer because it's very much connected to chanting the holy names of the Lord Japa. Okay. 
This particular verse is on the platform of attachment. It means that one is now, before one is trying to get to the stage of attachment, now one is attached. So the intimacy of this verse is increased from the previous verse expression. Now one is completely attached to Krishna's known as feet. And doesn't look for anything else. All of one's desires for material enjoyment, happiness, or even recognition of material existence is completely dissipated, completely gone. As it was expressed in the last verse, Madanam Najanam Nasundarim. But in this verse, these are all gone. One has no indicate, no trace of anything material left in their, in their heart. They simply now are begging for shelter at the lotus feet of the Lord. This verse is spontaneous. It comes from the heart, and it's a, it's a prayer of her shelter. It's a prayer to. Uh, to exchange love with the Lord, actually. Um, go to verse number 33, the next verse. So this verse continues the Zita expression, Tomara Nitya Dasa Muri Toma Pasariya, Pari Yoja Pari Yachon Bhaganaga Mava Bhagahana. I am your eternal servant, but I forgot your lordship. Now I've fallen into the ocean of nations and have been conditioned by the external energy. And go on to verse number 30. Four also. Kripa kari kara mori pada duli sama, tomada seva kakona, tomada seva nana. Be causelessly mercifully to me by giving a place with the particles of the dust of your lotus feet that I may engage in the service your your lordship as your eternal servant. So you see how this verse and the previous verse complements the main verse, Ayinandam Tanuja Kinkaram. So this is further expressions by Lord Chaitanya as he makes this prayer of begging for mercy, begging for shelter, begging for service. Uh, the intensification. So this is where bhakti emotions really start to flow on this level. The emotions in the heart start to flow out and these are the expressions of how they that motion emotions take form. Uh, we're always in a position to beg from Krishna. We can't demand that Krishna come, Krishna be situated here, Krishna be do this, Krishna this, Krishna that. It's not like that. It's always in the mood of submission with the mood of begging for the Lord's mercy in different ways. Because that's our position. We, there's others who, who feel very confident, or maybe is what we say, overly confident in their relationship with Bhakti and may try to command Krishna, but you can't command Krishna. You can only you can only offer your heartfelt prayers in the mood of submission. And Krishna is there. Krishna hears and he responds. There's no doubt about that. In the uh, original verse, the word kinkara, ayi nanda, ani nanda tanuja kinkara. Kinkara comes from the word kim. Karomi. Kim Karomi. That's on verse 32. Mm -hmm. 
King Karomi is also uh, me. It's translated here, the servant. But the Acharyas give an, an extra added understanding of the, the word. King Karo means, how can I serve you? Not just, I am your servant, but how can I serve? What is the means for me to express my service to you? Now, this, this verse is complete attachment. Complete attachment with deep feelings of love starting to express itself. And now this verse starts to awaken our sarup, our inner identity. And we receive this inner identity realization from our spiritual master or from someone who is in the role of a spiritual master who is qualified to reveal it. Here, there's no question of asking for knowledge no question asking for uh, what we say, anything material. It's simply pure loving service is being expressed here. Okay, so these are something that we can think about in this verse. Uh, in the previous verse, Ruchi, is also attachment, but it's immature. And this verse, attachment has reached its maturity. <laughs> One of the symptoms, um, it's actually it's mentioned in the uh, in the uh, nectar of devotion by Rashila Rupa Goswami. One of the symptoms in this particular verse, or one who is on the level of this particular level of practice is they have and they become very unhappy if they waste one moment without serving the Lord. They have they use every second of their existence in devotional service. And if they find themselves wasting time, or if someone is wasting their time, they become unhappy or maybe even express some anger. And this anger is just their love for Krishna that they want to use every moment in connection with Krishna. <laughs> okay. Okay, so this is still Sadhana Bhakti. Sadhana Bhakti contains uh, Vaidhi Bhakti and Raganuga Bhakti. So these are the later stages of Sadhana Bhakti. Uh, Baba Bhakti starts on verse number seven and continues into Prema Bhakti. And then finally, like that. Okay, this is verse number eight. So thank you very much, Premavati, Hare Krishna. Yeah, Krishna is very beautiful. And one of the one of the alankaras or ornaments of, of attracting to attracting us to himself is his beauty. Devotees get attached or attracted to Krishna by his by his beautiful, beautiful form and all the different parts of his transcendental body which exhibit uh, different levels of attraction, <laughs> different kinds of attraction. <laughs> okay, any other, any comments or questions that we... Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. It was really nice listening uh, explanation of this verse. Uh, and devotees, if you have any questions, comments, realizations, reflections, uh, please unmute yourself and you can ask the questions or type in the chat box. Thank you, Hare Krishna. I can see Vivek Prabhu has a question. Go on, Vivek Prabhu. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Maharaj. Maharaj, uh, my question is like, 
when i uh, read this uh, prayer or this verse and actually like all this verse 5 6 7 8 it looks like a complete prayer like there is nothing left after this like in when we are chanting or when we are remembering lord any time is there something like anything like i am missing here like i feel like this is a complete prayers like whatever we need from lord whatever we need to do something for lord yeah it is hmm. even yeah even the previous verse and it is a prayer but each verse is an intensification of the emotion and so the prayers are reaching higher and more intense forms of emotional expression yeah that's correct so there's nothing like we mentioned in the very beginning of our discussion when we started these series of prayers is that the entire process of pure devotional service is found within these eight prayers and the unpacking of that has been done by the six goswamis of vrindavan and also bhakti vinod thakur at the siddhanta service with you in other words the pure acharyas have studied these verses and unraveled them to show the more and more of the contents of what bhakti is made of bhakti is made of knowledge at the beginning and devotion as it progresses knowledge leads to devotion mm-hmm. but in the higher these higher verses they're mostly just pure emotion the knowledge is already fixed and so the expression is just simply loving devotion or the mood of a mood of separation from the lord so if you read these prayers every day and meditate on them and maybe also read about them from bhakti vinod thakur and bhakti siddhanta saraswati's commentaries you uh, you'll be able to understand deeper what these prayers are thank you guru maharaj i i have been reading these prayers guru maharaj from some time and i feel like it has like even while chanting it really reminds that yes we are nowhere and just need to do just like beg for krishna mercy more 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 every day every time yeah yeah if you think if you think you're okay you're not <laughs> that's a fact the living as long as we're in the material world we're in a dangerous position and at any time we can be overwhelmed by the material energy we need shelter we need mercy thank you guru maharaj thank you very much hari krishna thank you we had a, something from richie on the on the chat what was that expression it was a particular question uh, i can't see any questions oh yes it's just appeared now Yes, yeah, from and from yes. that from Jan from Richie Richie. Is yes, it's from Janva Mataji. And no, no, Kumar. from Richie from Richie Richie. R I C H I E. Richie asked the question. And... Oh, she must have uh, sent you uh, privately, Guru Maharaj, because I can't see it in my chat. It's number three. i can see only a, a question from uh, janva mata ji mm-hmm. put up put up the uh, questions mm-hmm. okay guru maharaj i was reading the question while i was answering this other question so seem quite interesting uh, i will read the janva mata ji's question because i can't see richi uh, mata ji's question no uh, put up put up the all the questions that are on the chat <laughs> Okay, Guru Maharaj.
Guru Maharaj, if I may be a little helpful, if the question has been sent to you privately, uh, Anjali will not be able to see it or put it up on the chat. She has no access to it. Oh, I see. Well, how did it, how did it, how did I how did I see it? Yes, yeah, she must have sent it to you privately, Guru Maharaj. That's why I can't see it. But this is the question from uh, uh, Janva Mataji. If you want to read, and I can uh, ask uh, Ruchi Mataji to send it to me as well. Okay. Can you please explain what Srila Prabhupada means? Yeah, that's the one from Richie. Okay, okay. can you, yeah, can you, I'll, yeah, I'll do the, all right. Now I got two questions at once. Yeah, there is one more question now I can see and she's saying, uh, Richi Mataji, I can see Richi Mataji's question now. If an entity falls down after attaining Krishna Loka, is there still chance of redemption? Well, once you go back, you don't fall down again. Krishna says that in the Bhagavad Gita. Mm -hmm. uh, one who attains to my abode never comes back to this miserable world of birth and death. Abramana Bhuvana Loka Purna Rita Arjuna Mamu Petu Purna Janma. We got the last line. Janma Vana Nirnavidyate. Uh, it's in, in the 15th verse of the 8th chapter. One who comes 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 back to Krishna after leaving Krishna, they don't come back to this material world again. One's in full knowledge. <laughs> yeah. So uh, the idea is to get back. Once you get back, you won't want to come back again. You can, but you won't. It's just, you're in full knowledge. You've experienced the suffering of the material world. You Now you're back with Krishna in loving devotional service. It's like you put your hand in the fire and then you understand fire burns. So now you don't put your hand in the fire anymore because you know what will happen because you had the experience of the burning already. So when we're back in the spiritual world, we're in full knowledge of everything, past, present, and future. Trikala. And Janava's question is? Yes, I will read it, Guru Maharaj. Uh, so she's asked, uh, can you please explain what Srila Prabhupada means for material senses are separated energies of the Lord? Well, yeah, <clears throat> anything material is separated from the Lord. Material means separation, it's synonymous. Spiritual means connection, material means separate. separate. So the separated energy of the Lord is the material energy. So the senses, if they're used in a material way, they're, they're the separated energy of the Lord. If you use your senses for devotional service, then they become spiritualized. Everything material can be you. Everything material means everything separated can be reunited in devotion, and then it's no longer material anymore. And it's no longer separated. Matter is one of the uh, one of the energies of Krishna. Krishna has three three main energies. The Tasta Shakti, Bahiranga Shakti, and Antaranga Shakti. We are Tatasta Shakti, the living entity in the material world. In the spiritual world, there is Antaranga Shakti, and the material energy is Bahiranga Shakti. 
Vahi Ranga Shakti makes up all the material universes, which means the three modes of material nature. That's the essence of the external energy of the Lord. It's an energy. Everything is the energy of the Lord. There's nothing outside of his energy. There's only two things in existence, the Lord and his energies. That's all. That's all there is. And they're not separate. They're always connected to each other. So, but material energy works in a certain way. Spiritual energy works in a, in a, in a different way. What was that other question? Number seven, I saw something. So those were just the uh, messages from uh, uh, Janva Mataji Guru Maharaj, which you responded already. Okay. Uh, so Shri Devi Mataji, you have a question? Yes, please. Thank you, Anjali. Uh, please accept my humble obeisances, Guru Maharaj. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Guru Maharaj. My question is, this verse is uh, very clearly saying that uh, Krishna, I'm completely helpless. It's completely up to you, but I'm still begging you to place me as a particle of dust at your lotus feet. So no matter how much we may try, even for millions of lifetimes, it's really not in our hands. If Krishna desires to pick us up, then, then only we can attain his lotus feet. It's completely in his hands. He's completely independent. But he, but he fulfills your desire. If you don't have the desire to get picked up, you won't get picked up. But if you have the desire to get picked up, then you'll get picked up. Okay, so there is some hope then. Uh, well, what do you think? I'm trying to feel hopeful. The situation seems pretty hopeless. Well, it's hopeless because you can't do it, but Krishna can. My question it's, is, how can we attract that kind of mercy from Krishna that he will actually want to do that? There's a verse that, express, that tells you exactly how to do it. I can't think of where that verse is, and I know the verse. It's really a powerful verse. Is that one has to have intense greed to get Krishna. If the intensity of that greed is not there, then that falls short of the goal. One has to want Krishna more than anything. Then, not only is there hope, but there's success. <laughs> the word is laoyam. Laoyam means L-A-U-L-Y-A-N, laoyam. I'm not sure where that verse is. If someone can find it, we have any scholars out there who know where that verse is? Uh, let me see if I can find it in my verse book. I'm not sure. But it's it's the it's the only way you can get Krishna fully. Wow, yeah. hmm. Let me see here. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if I can find it. But let me take, take a look. 
take a little look here. Mansi Ganga Mataji is saying it's Madhilila 8.70. Would that be? Should I share? Yeah, let's see if that's the verse. Okay, Guru Maharaj. One second. Yeah, it would be it would be in Chaitanya Charitamrita, that's for sure. Sri Devi, you can't do it. None of us can do it. We can only desire to do it. Yes, Guru Maharaj, only by your causeless mercy can we be saved. It's impossible otherwise. This is it. This is the verse. Thank you, uh, Manasi Ganga. Bring it down. Krishna Bhakta Rasa Bhavat. Krishna Bhakta Rasa Bhavita Miti. Kritayam yadi kuto ki labdite. Tatralao yam api muya mekalam. Janmakoti. Sukritayar na labdite. Pure devotional service in Krishna consciousness cannot be had even by pious activities in hundreds and thousands of life. It can be attained only by paying one price, that is, intense greed to obtain it. If it is available somewhere, one must purchase it without delay. Okay, does that answer your question? <laughs> Do you get to that stage of intense greed? Yes, see, if a, see if there's a, a purport down there. Oh yeah. Yeah, let me see what right here. One's, one's dormant Krishna consciousness awakened, it spontaneous flows to the lotus feet of Krishna without impediment. So after we have to awaken that love, and once it does, it start it, it builds on itself. So that intense greed will come as the intensification of devotion uh, increases as devotion becomes intensified. Mm -hmm. Okay. Krishna is not so easy. I mean, to get Krishna means mm, the highest, it's called the, the highest thing you can attain ever in any existence anywhere not easy to get Krishna so it requires everything we have if you're holding back something that will cut you short of the goal mm -hmm. we want to give everything and what can we give we can only give our love and we can give our love in the form of our time and our Attentiveness to Krishna, or like that, in the form of serving Krishna. Mm -hmm. The thing about bhakti is you can't fail. If you stay with bhakti, you're bound to reach success. Because as you can stay with bhakti, you're making progress. And even if you don't make complete progress in this life, you pick up in the next life and you'll continue where you left off. And then you can finish up. So bhakti is never, never an activity where you fail. There's always success, there's always progress, ultimately towards the goal. So never become discouraged, but never become what we say complacent either. <laughs> okay. 
Hare Krishna Maharaj, I have a small question. Uh, please accept my humble obeisance. He's all glorious to Shri Prabhupada. All glorious to you, Maharaj. Maharaj, uh, thank you for this wonderful uh, class. And you mentioned in your class, uh, it, it, it is a procedural question uh, where you said that where <clears throat> where you mentioned that when we do darshan of the deities, we start from the feet and then go upwards and then come back again to the feet and then pay obeisances. Uh, but so do we do darshan first and then do obeisances or obeisances and darshan? Because I've always done the other way where uh, we, I pay obeisances and then do the darshan. No, you, you first you you greet Krishna and then you offer your obeisances. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's because... the etiquette. Yeah. Sometimes we we make a little joke, and the curtains open and everybody's on the floor already. Yes. So Krishna turns to Radharani. Where did they go? Oh, there they are. Oh, okay. <laughs> Because I've been doing it that way, and I was going to ask you because as soon as the curtains, uh, at the manor especially, the, the curtains open, and then everybody's on the floor, and then I'm you... sorry to say, but nobody knows how to do it. These are Prabhupada's instructions. You you actually greet the Lord, and then after greeting him, then you pay your obeisances. Greet him with your eyes. You greet him by meeting him through what we say, visual contact. Thank you, Maharaj, for clarifying. So I'll do it that's right the, now. That's just the etiquette for darshan. I mean, if you crash to the floor, I see people, they do the dive bomb on the floor. You know, sometimes you wonder if they're going to get up after they hit the floor so hard. Uh, uh, so, you know, that's, that's really not the mood. <laughs> it's nothing wrong in that, but it's just not the, the proper mood. That's a... Thank you, Maharaj, for clarifying that detail. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And thank you, Diptesh Prabhu. Raj Prabhu, you have a question. You can unmute yourself. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare thank you very much for your sharing those wonderful verses and explaining them to me i'll definitely meditate on those i my question is around uh i often have trouble or feel uncomfortable praying directly to krishna i feel so much more comfortable praying to either Srimati radharani srila prabhupada or the other acharyas six goswamis but i always struggle a little with praying directly to Krishna and uh, what your advice would be. Oh, by offering a prayer to Srimati Radharani, she'll offer it to Krishna anyway. So that's even better than praying directly to Krishna. Radharani is pleased with your offering a prayer and then Krishna automatically is pleased without any second thought. So uh, yeah, they, Prabhupada used to say, if you can please Radharani, Krishna's automatically pleased. <laughs> so that's nice. That's, uh, but you see here in this particular verse, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is in the mood of Srimati Radharani, who's praying to Krishna. He's Krishna, but he's in Radha, Radha's mood. That's Mahaprabhu. So when he's praying, he's praying in Radharani's mood to Krishna. But he's also teaching us also. So if you pray to Radharani, then that's perfect. Or if you pray to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, that's also perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you, Raj Prabhu. Uh, uh, Guru Maharaj, uh, there is one more question from Vivek Prabhu, uh, Anshumata Ji's Vivek Prabhu. He's saying how this is possible in this material and grasta life to have such intense greed for Krishna to attain in this very lifetime, even if we follow bhakti. <laughs> You're asking me <laughs> that question. 
I'm laughing because I'm <laughs> Grihastha life means to get distracted. That's what that's what it usually means. So yeah. So generally <laughs> to honestly answer that question, you you have to be free from any desire in to enjoy in family life. You know, if you're on the level of what we say, Bhakti Vinod Thakur, who was a Grihasta. And Prabhupada would refer to him as Paramahansa Grihasta. Interesting terminology. We don't usually connect Paramahansa with the word Grihasta, but Prabhupada did with, with Bhakti Vinod Thakur. So the ashram is not a restriction because all souls are by nature part and parcel of Krishna. But it's harder in Grihasta Ashram because you have to, you know, somehow bypass all of the attractions that surround you and become fully attracted to Krishna. But it's possible if you practice. So we have, in the history of our movement, we have Sri Vasta Kaur, we have Bhakti Vinoda Kaur, we have, um, who else? Yeah, Ramananda Roy was a Grihasta also. Many, many of Krishna's, uh, or Lord Chaitanya's associates were Grihastas. But they had intense and pure love for Krishna. Mm -hmm. So it is possible, but it's a lot, it's, it's, it's more difficult. That's, that's coming from your husband, Vivek. Uh, no, Guru Maharaj, this is um, Anshu Mataji's Vivek Prabhu. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. That's why Queen Kunti, she's, a, she's in Grihasta life. What is she praying? My dear Lord, Tatra Tatra Jagat Guru, please give me, uh, uh, please make calamities come in my life because everything's so nice. <laughs> I'm surrounded by aristocratic relatives, you know, family members. I have, you know, I'm, I'm respectable. All these things are, you know, making my, my devotion to you become interfered. So give me some calamities. So if you want to pray like Queen Kunti, you can, but get ready for the calamities when they come. <laughs> you said thanks this time. Well, thanks means <laughs> incomplete, but anyway. <laughs> I, I don't know, Guru Maharaj, really how to really pray for that. Uh, maybe not like immediately, but I hope like one day, uh, by your mercy, like I can get that intense mood. <laughs> Yeah, it's, there's, this material world is surrounded by, this material world is designed to make us forget about Krishna. That's how it's designed. And the miseries help us become more Krishna consciousness. And the, the things, the niceties have a tendency to make us forget. They don't have to make you forget, but that's the tendency. So if you, if you connect everything with Krishna, then it becomes more natural to keep your love focused on Krishna. When the prasadam is nice, you just say, oh, no, Krishna, thank you very much for providing this nice prasadam. So the niceties or the pleasantries of life 
should be seen in relationship to the gifts of Krishna. That's all. And don't get attached to the gift. As this verse says here, this verse is different than the previous verse because in the previous verse, Lord Chaitanya and the mood of Radharani is, is, in the, is attached to the service. In this verse, Lord Chaitanya is attached to Krishna. So it's no longer, it's the attachment for service is still there, but it's the attachment now has become fixed on Krishna. And that's why this verse is in the mood of uh, spontaneous loving devotion. <laughs> Thanks, Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Good luck. I need your mercy and blessings, Guru Maharaj. I don't think I can do anything. <laughs> well, you can try. <laughs> yes, yes, definitely. Yes. And keeping your focus on Krishna, attentiveness to Krishna, is the way to achieve it. If you're always keeping your attention on Krishna, then it becomes actually natural after a while. To forget Krishna becomes unnatural. To remember Krishna is natural. Uh, Guru Maharaj, I have another question, if I may. My question is about this stage which we are talking about. It's such an exalted stage to reach this point of, you know, uh, not even wasting one second because that, that just uh, detracts from your service to Krishna. Before reaching this, we have to cross over Anartha Nivriti, which is a big struggle. Even to reach Nishta is a big struggle. After that is Ruchi and then is Asakti. So these are very, we are talking about highly elevated stages in bhakti, are we not? Not the highest. It's approaching, it's approaching uh, Baba Bhakti. The next verse is also spontaneous devotional service. But Baba Bhakti starts on verse number seven. So if we are still struggling with anartha nivriti, we have to first reach nishta. We, then after nishta, we have to reach ruchi. And then we are going to reach the stage. And uh, it's very likely that many lifetimes can go like this, isn't it? Well, it depends. The process is there. The intensity of devotion makes it short or long. Yeah, it can take you millions of lifetimes or it can take you one or two lifetimes. But you have to learn the symptoms of each of the stages. If you don't know the symptoms, then you don't know how to progress from one stage to the next. Those symptoms are nicely described in Jaiva Dharma by Bhakti Vinod Thakur, which we, re which we recommended about a couple of weeks ago. As the, yes, we have, the, we have yeah. that PDF. Uh, it was sent, so we have that PDF. I'm just thinking about, can we make it in one lifetime? Prabhupada said you can, but it's rare. I just, well, I just read in Bhagavad Tam, I think it was yesterday. Prabhupada said generally it takes two lifetimes. That, even at the end of this life, one will go to where Krishna is somewhere in the material world and associate with him in his pastimes in the material world. And then after that life, one will return back to Krishna in the spiritual world. He says generally it takes two lifetimes of uh, serious practice of bhakti. We don't know how much we win associating with Krishna in our previous life. This might be our second life. 
because associating with the holy name is associating with Krishna. Krishna has appeared in this material world as the holy name. So he's personally present in the holy name. He's personally present in Srimad Bhagavatam. If you make it look like a mountain that you can't, you know, you can't climb, it will be like that. The, the mindset is the devotee has to think, I can't do it, but I, but there is a way to do it. And with, by, if I follow that way, then I can access Krishna's mercy. And if I do that, then I can become successful. Mother Yasoda couldn't tie up Krishna. It's only when Krishna allowed himself to be tied up that she, he was a, she was able to tie him up. In the same way, our efforts in bhakti is our success. Not just the work attitude, and not just the, the the activity itself, but the mood, the mood of loving devotion. If you don't get attracted to Krishna, you'll stay attracted to things in this world. And if you stay attracted to Krishna's things in this world, you take another birth. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Oh, just on the, just on the side, um, as soon as you get a chance, maybe tomorrow, send me the next installation of the transcriptions. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Whatever you've done, just send it because I'm, I'm, I'm almost finished with what you already sent. Okay, no problem, I will. Thank you. Yeah, just, just keep sending it so I can keep working on my on my side. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Yeah. All right. That's it, Anjali. We can close here. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. We're a little bit beyond the time here, but that's fine. Yeah. Uh, we'll move next uh, tomorrow. There is a special class that's been requested for the devotees from South Africa. Yep. And so that is at the same time. So everyone can just come at the same time. And it'll be their Zoom. Uh, I think either Tushar or Mother Lavanya, either one Tushar Prabhu uh, has the information. I think Tushar posted it. On the on the conference, I think Lavanya Mataji also posted it, um, Prabhu. Yeah, so both of them have um, posted on the different groups as well. Yes. Yeah. Also. So so just make sure that everyone has access to that. So that's tomorrow's class. So we'll interrupt the Shikshastikam for one day to go into this, and it's a verse from the Srimad Bhagavatam. I can give you a preview of the verse so you can look ahead if you want to read it, study it. It's um, first canto, seventh chapter, verse number five. One, seven, five. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. My obeisances to everyone. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Okay. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much for the wonderful session. And thank you so much, devotees, for um, uh, your uh, attention and all the wonderful questions. Jai. Shila Prabhupada ki jai. Guru Maharaj ki jai. Hare Krishna ki jai. Hare Krishna.